Yay. All right. We made it to September. We're here. We did it. Um, <clears throat> barely for me, but whatever. Um, so thank you, Anita, for my get well card. That was very sweet. Um, so, um, yeah, we, um, somewhere I caught COVID and then proceeded to give it to my sweet husband. And, um, last week was a rough week. Um, so, um, anyway, we are, I'm feeling better. Um, but I might have to clear my throat a few times, but, um, super excited, um, to be into the holiday catalog and we're all crafting a lot. And, um, for those of you who have joined us in the organized swap or the shoebox swap or stamp camp or any of the fun things that we've been doing, Candy's training event as well. Um, we had a lot of crafting. Yeah right at the beginning of the month, which yeah, was awesome. Wow. Um, and that was a great that way to kick off our, um, our, our holiday catalog um, and really get a jump into all of that. So hopefully you've been playing with some things in the holiday catalog. Um, I realized <clears throat> about midway through the COVID fog last week, that I didn't think I had posted our September challenge. I told you guys about it in August, if you were at the August meeting, but I forgot to post the little graphic. So this month's challenge is to stamp with someone. It can be anyone. It could be your foreign exchange student. It could be a crafty group of friends. It could be just one friend. It, um, it could have been something that already happened over the last couple of weeks, but just post a photo um, in our group and um, let me know. I'm going to do a drawing for a prize and I'm going to do a drawing for each of the months of the fall, but then I'm also going to do a bigger drawing if you participate in all the challenges. So as a reminder, August is um, booking a craft fair. Let's say that it's September and you just booked a craft fair. You can go back to the August post and go ahead and post about it. It's okay. Um, because I know that sometimes, you know, we don't get these things arranged, you know, in August and that's okay. But a craft fair, um, it could be a bazaar. It could be something at, um, I know um, someone reached out to me and they have like a senior apartment, senior living, and they want to do like a little craft fair. Um, it could be something at a farmer's market. It could be at your church. It could be at a local high school. I know high schools do a lot of these um, fundraisers for like boosters and stuff. Um, so it doesn't really matter what it is. Um, but if you book something, make sure you go back on that post and you do that. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pin um, that post to the top of the page. And I'll also pin September's post, which is to stamp with somebody. Um, if you want to prepare ahead, October is to share on your social media. So that one I'm going to restrict to October itself. Um, and it could be something as simple as here's a card I made, or here's me having fun with a stampy friend, or, you know, here's a fun project I made and gave to somebody. Um, it doesn't have to be salesy. And it doesn't have to be, it can just be you sharing what you're enjoying doing. So please don't be worried about that. Um, November is a gratitude challenge. I'll post and then we'll go in there and post things we're grateful about. That's really easy. And we can all do that. Um, yeah, Anita. Uh, do we post it on our personal Facebook page or on the C to C? For the, um, for the social media, the social yeah. media of them. For that one, you're going to share on your personal page. And then if you can take a screenshot of it and put that over in our comments, that would be great because then it would help oh, okay. me um, yeah. to be able to see it. Yeah. Because um, we follow, a lot of us are friends with each other, but not everybody. So it'd be nice to see what we're doing. So, um, And then December will be your holiday cards. So I want to see what cards you're sending out for the holidays. And um, I'm going to dovetail that with something that Candy talked a little bit about a few weeks ago at her training. Um, and, you know, we've been talking about this for a while. Sarah Douglas has been talking about this concept of eradicating loneliness, right? 
in how the holidays aren't always happy and jolly for everyone. Um, and so she had this really great idea to think of a person or two who might want to get a card every week during the holiday season. That could be between Thanksgiving and Christmas or however you want to define it. You know, maybe it's just two or three cards, but um, going ahead and writing that person's name down, pulling out some cards now. Um, we have a lot of stamp sets that actually are really great for this this year. I'm thinking of the nests of winter because it says like thinking of you and happiness is a friend like you, right? So it's not a Christmas stamp, right? But it's very seasonally appropriate and is a nice card that they might like to get during the holiday season. I can think of several people on my list who have lost significant others recently, um, who um, maybe, you know, their kids are, you know, flown and grown and they are going to have some quieter holiday seasons in their future. Um, so I can think of some people that I know I would like to send cards to during that season. So we're going to do that as well. Um, and I'll post that in December. That doesn't mean you have to send them in December. You could have sent them in November or, you know, forward, but, um, but yeah, so I'm hoping that we, um, will get some, some traction on that. And I think Candy is, I can imagine that she might be doing something for it as well. She, um, was pretty, um, gun ho about it at her training a couple weeks ago. So, um, a couple of other things that, um, are going on right now, um, free shipping on Wednesday, surprise, hello, Monday. Um, I know. So, um, I just ordered something and literally an hour later they announced it. I died laughing. I was like, well, poop, but oh, well, um, so um, a lot of times these sales aren't necessarily for us. They're for customers, right? We want to encourage customers. Um, and I think with this holiday catalog um, and then with the new scrapbooking products, we just maybe um, there's an opportunity to tell folks like, hey, if you haven't had a chance to order yet, now's your chance, right? Because this is a really... Um, you know, to get free shipping in and get the supplies you need. It is a $75 minimum order for that. So just FYI. Um, but if you were kind of going to place an order or you're holding an order, um, you know, Wednesday would be a great day. Now, if you're waiting on peppermints, Wednesday's still not a great day because the peppermints aren't going to be back in stock on Wednesday. I don't think they'll be back in stock until Monday. Um, Turn the peppermints, but um, when they are back in stock, <clears throat> I'll definitely be getting some. Um, but if you look at the inventory status report, you'll see that there's quite a few things that are um, on back order or are going to be coming in over the next couple of weeks. So um, we can definitely tell there's some runaway favorites and that kind of, it ranges. There's paper, there's embellishments, it, it's been interesting. Um, I know that the Shepherd's Care stamp set was on there. It's now off. It's back in stock. Um, but that was apparently um, kind of a fan favorite that maybe they didn't anticipate being so popular. Um, so I had a customer who messaged me about that. And I said, hey, you're in luck. It's back in stock. So she went ahead and grabbed that. But um, I sent a newsletter today to um, you guys, to team. I also went through and cleaned up my newsletter list. I wanted to make sure I had everyone on the list. And I also wanted to make sure I had a few duplicate emails for some folks. And so I've gone in and eliminated those. So I finally think I have a nice clean email list for team, which is great. And then I also sent an email to customers. Um, and one of the reasons I include you guys on that email is if you ever wanted to see what I send to customers, right? This is what I'm sending to customers. I tell them about whatever sale we've got. Um, you know, we've got information on, um, good. I'm glad to hear that, Terry, um, about paper pumpkin and all the new paper pumpkin things coming. Um, and, um, and then of course I always include my classes and stuff. So, um, a couple of things, paper pumpkin. So if someone has never subscribed to paper pumpkin, with a certain email address, <laughs> then they can get October's Paper Pumpkin at 40% off, which is $15. I did the math. <laughs> I don't know why they're not just saying $15. So $15 is a really good deal 
for 10 Christmas cards. So that particular paper pumpkin is 10 Christmas cards. That's really hard to beat. Um, if you have an alternate email address that you use, and you would like to use that, you can use that and then just go in and after that month, you can cancel that subscription. So let's say you're already getting Paper Pumpkin, but you want to get a second one. That's a smart way to do it. As long as you've never used that email address, then you qualify for the 40% off. You do have to put that code, that holiday 40 in though. So you do, your customers and you both have to use that holiday 40 code or else it won't take the discount. Okay. So um, Paper Pumpkin for the month of October can be 40% off for new customers or people who have many email addresses. I have many email addresses. <laughs> they keep multiplying. I don't know what it is, y'all. Um, so, um, you know, it's definitely a possibility, especially if you would like to, um, because it's Five, it's 10 cards, five of two designs. That's actually a really great one to use if you're going to go teach a class somewhere because you're getting multiples and you don't have three designs. You have just two designs. So if you were going to go teach this class at a senior center or um, this, this paper pumpkin would be a really smart one to get multiples of because it would be a really easy one to teach somewhere with friends um, and it only has two designs, which is always a plus in my mind when I'm divvying up a kit and teaching it to like a group like that. So, um, so other than that, um, I wanted to check in and see who has stamped with someone this month. I know that Elena just showed us a picture and she was crafting with her, Foreign exchange student, which is exciting. Um, and then um, I know that who else has stamped with someone this month? Who came to the shoebox swap? Oh, so you stamped with someone. It doesn't matter who that someone is. <laughs> You stamped with someone, right? That that counts, huh? That counts, right. Oh, okay. Yeah. So stamping with someone doesn't necessarily have to be someone new or someone outside of our circle, right? So one of the things is social, stamping is really social. It can be really social. And so if you're stamping with someone, anyone outside of your circle, that's a great opportunity to have some social time and that interaction. Yeah, Kathleen, tell me, tell me, tell me. You want to come off of mute? Yeah. Um, my next door neighbor and her sister-in-law normally come to my monthly card class, but they had a conflict last time. And so they were like, go ahead, keep doing it. And we'll do it like a makeup day. And I kind of thought they were just blowing me off. Um, and so I reached out to them a little bit later and I was just like, hey, I still have those packets if you guys have any interest in doing it. Um, and they were like, yeah, absolutely. Let us figure out our schedules. And so it ended up working out and they actually liked it better than like the monthly card class we did because they felt it was like more of like a personal like one-on-one -on -one connection I had more attention to give to them whereas like I'm kind of running around between three different tables of three to four stampers um at my monthly um class so uh they liked it but they're also like you know I miss the social element of like meeting up with other people in the neighborhood and whatnot but like this was nice every once in a while to kind of have our own like private time and like ask you questions and like get your expertise on things. And I was like, oh, cool. So yeah, that's I did awesome. last Monday. That's awesome. And so how many do you have coming to your regular class? Uh, it depends. It's usually anywhere from seven to 13. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, um, yeah, that's a lot. Um, and what are you charging for your, your normal class? Um, well, it depends on how many cards they make. I make three designs. I encourage everyone to at least make one of each design. So most people are at least spending $15, $5, $5 a card or $5 a design, if you will. Um, but some of them are saying that they have a very hard time giving the cards away. They want to keep the cards. And so I've offered if they wanted to do two of each design or even three of each design, I won't show them the designs in advance because usually I'm still working on them. Truth be told. However, um, um, I will tell them like what type of card it is. So I'll say like a masculine birthday card, or I'll say a feminine birthday card, or I'll say like a thinking of you card, or I'll say like um, 
like this one has like a seasonal like summer vibe to it. Um, and it's like a just checking in or hey, how are you kind of card. And so they know at least like what like who the intended recipient would most likely be. And they seem to like that a lot better. They're like, as long as we know what kind of cards we're making, I can tell you if I want to make two of them, three of them, or just one of them. Nice. That's awesome. That's really great. I like that. I like that you're giving some flexibility. And I also like that you've noticed, like, you don't want people to just hold the cards. I call them covet cards, right? We don't want them to just covet them. We want them to give them away, you know? So um, it's great that you noticed that and came up with a solution. So that's awesome. Thanks. Who else has been stamping? Patsy, you've been stamping with some people? Well, I'm, I have a class this coming weekend and I have a new lady that I met when I went to visit with Tina and Max and talked to her and she used to stamp and she moved from up north. And so she said, I said, well, I teach classes. And she said, good, I would love to come. So I confirmed today and she's, she's coming. Yay, uh, somebody new in the group. That's Yay. awesome. We love that. So, and it's great that you have welcoming groups that, you know, you're just going to keep inviting people and bringing people in. So that's awesome. Who else has been stamping with someone lately? I stamped with someone, but it was last month. Uh, and I invited uh, this lady that she said she had two birthday cards that she needed to make one male and one female. And I said, okay, I'll set it up and we'll just play. So that's what we did. So thank you. I love that. I love that. And I think that's the idea, right? Is yeah, just come over and we'll play and we'll have some fun. And um, last month I had Tanya, uh, my new customer come and she wanted to learn how to stamp. And so, you know, we stamped and we made a card and she was like, oh, I wasn't expecting to like walk away with a finished card. And it was a well, what did you think we were going to do? It's like, of course, we're going to make a card, you know? And uh, so that's great. That's awesome. That's really good to hear. So um, yeah. So stamping with someone. Yeah, Anita. Well, I didn't get to stamp with my friend because she bought a new house and she was moving into a new house, but I borrowed her stamp set and I made a bunch of gamma. So I stamped with her stamp set. That's mm -hmm. funny. Well, and we were laughing because Patsy called me a couple of weeks ago and she said, um, I had a lady order eight Halloween cards and she wants each Halloween card to be different than the other because it's all going to grandchildren. And I was like, oh, well, that'll be challenging for you considering you don't buy Halloween stamp sets. <laughs> so we've been putting our thinking caps on to get creative um, and, um, you know, figure out how, you know, how we want to do that. Right. But I think that, you know, we see, um, there are people who value a handmade card and people who we know need to, we need to spend some time with. Yeah. You got that Halloween paper. That's smart. That scrapbooking Halloween paper is super cute. And I'm already seeing some designs and that ephemera pack. Yeah. I'm already seeing some designs on demonstrator planning place using the paper and stuff. So that's good. It makes me feel good that we're all getting into that. So, um, well, good. Okay. So stay with someone. So we still have a couple of weeks left in the month. Um, it is only the 16th. Um, and so we still have two more weekends in the month. Um, I know I have my Mary Makers class and um, you guys reminded me, I had a class, Kathleen, what you said reminded me, I had a class and the lady who was going to come had um, eye surgery. And so she couldn't come because she couldn't, she was like, I do not think I can see enough to do this. And so I need to reach back out to her and get that rescheduled um, because I know she wants to come and do the projects, but she just couldn't at the time. So um, yeah. So, you know, what else can you squeeze in at the end of this month, right? What kind of crafting fun can you have? And it doesn't have to be big. It can be little. I wanted to show you guys the two new kits that came out this month because um, you might not have had a chance to see them yet. I know a few of us did when we went to Candies. Um, <clears throat> one of them weighs a lot. <laughs> I was surprised at how hefty this was. So this is the um, card keeper kit. 
so ingeniously named. <laughs> um, and it has a box that all of the cards go in. And I wanted to show you, it's very, very solid and very, very hefty. Um, yeah, I'm telling you, Kathleen, it's hefty. Um, this is serious, y'all. Like this is um got some, it's got some weight to it. So the I hope you see the foiling on that lid. It is absolutely stunning. The inside has some cute little polka dots. And then the box just pops up like so. And there's some um there's some tear and tape on the bottom. So when you put this together, it's like completely solid and really large, actually. Um, this is a really solid, I mean, this is way bigger. We've had like a card keeper box before that was a lot smaller. This is actually really, really large. And I have requests for card keeper boxes from people all the time. Um, if you sell your cards um, to people or if people, you know, are like, oh, I love your cards. Um, check in with them and see if they need one of these, because if they buy your cards, they're most likely storing them or keeping them until they need them for an occasion. That's a very good question. And I can tell you the number for this kit is 164377. 164377. Most likely they need something to store their cards in. And this would be a really nice upsell to say, hey, I know you've bought a lot of my cards in the past. This is a really cool box that you can store those cards in. And it comes with very sturdy. These are like a chipboard weight, but beautiful dividers. So it has the dividers already. It only comes in this deep blue color. Yep. And it has six dividers. And then in the kit itself, are stickers to label the dividers, which is really nice. And the stickers come in, of course, all the languages, right? Because you know us, but they have a birthday, love and support, miscellaneous, seasonal, special occasion, and thank you. And they have it in all the different languages. And then it comes with, I think it's 10. Yeah, it comes with 10 cards and envelopes to make. So there's yellow and blue envelopes. There is gold foiling on the cards. That's one card base. And then what I like about the sentiments is it's not just like five birthday and five thank you. It has like, um, just because happy birthday, thinking of you, best wishes, happy for you. It has a wide variety of sentiments. And the other one, the other card base is this cute kind of pool party look. And what I like about this is then we can make lots of different cards and it has vellum and it has leaves, vellum circles, gold foil leaves. I mean, it's a really nice kit. It's a non-stamping kit, um, which is perfectly fine. And it would give them 10 cards to start with. Um, and then if they've already bought cards from you, then they have some more to stick in there. But um, this is a really nice starter kit. And um, this is a really great quality item. I think it's 25, but we can find out because I don't remember and I'm sorry I don't remember, but I'm going to verify it is 25. I just checked it earlier. Excellent. Thank you. Save some time. Thanks. So, and I think the box plus 10 cards for 25, it's a good deal. Um, I think that that's, and I think we've had card boxes and card containers in the past. We've had kind of that lunchbox soft-sided one, but it didn't have the sorters. We've had sorters and these metal tins before, 
but the metal tins were a little bit smaller and they didn't have the capacity. This is a really nice capacity. Um, so um, I just wanted to kind of show you guys what's in this kit if you haven't seen it yet. And I think if you see the size, it would be a great gift. And if you filled it with the cards, I mean, what a lovely gift. And if you could put in a few other cards, that would be amazing. So um, yeah, great gift and, um, and a great, um, you know, I don't know. I really, I like it a lot. I think it's a really great kit. Um, the other kit that came out is the ornament kit. And you know how, please tell me someone else has done this. You've ordered something on Amazon and it comes and it's larger or smaller than you imagined, right? You order something, you think it's gonna be this big and it's this big, right? Um, and then you go back and you read on Amazon, you go, oh yeah, that does say one inch by one inch, huh? Um, for instance, I ordered something for retreat. I thought they were going to be this small and they were this big. And I was like, oh, that's not quite the size I thought those were gonna be. I feel like this kid is the same way. You, you, you read the description and you say, yes, yes, I'm going to be making ornaments. And then you get them and you go, oh, wow, that is a lot bigger of an ornament than I thought. Mm -hmm. Look at the ornament size. I am in normal proportion to my face. <laughs> they are hefty. There are two sizes of ornaments in this kit. There are the bigger circles and the smaller ones. And the big ones are larger than a bangle that I would wear on my wrist. I mean, this is. They're um, five inches. We measured them. Yes. And, and, you know, you think five inches in your head, but you don't think five inches, right? Those are some uh, clubbing hoops. <laughs> yeah, they would be. This is some JLo serious size. And then the other ones are three inch. That's a little more, you know, my size. But I mean, this is serious, y'all, like some serious hoopage here. So um, I just, I knew this made ornaments, but I didn't know that these were quite this solid. They're hefty as well. Um, and I'm going to say that this is not a cheap looking kit. Like I thought it looked a little cheap, maybe in the photos. The bows are pre-tied for you, which is hilarious. And I am cracking up. I know you guys love that. Um, I think that's hilarious. Um, and the ornaments are actually, or the little pine cones are actually plastic, which is really funny, um, but they're incredibly lifelike. And even though they're plastic, and I think they did this because you put it together with hot glue and I think that they must, they must withstand really well. And then the little berries are really cute too. Um, you know, no, they're way bigger, Kathleen, way bigger and way more solid. Um, I remember those old gold rings that we had. Yeah, they're a lot more substantial. Like, <clears throat> yeah, I was surprised. Um, the ones that we had before were way thinner and weren't as like, this is solid. Like you could use this as like a ring for like a curtain or something. Like they're really solid. Um, so I was just surprised. Um, and for me, um, I do ornaments when I go to craft fairs because people like ornaments and it kind of draws them in. So I do a little Christmas tree and I have a bunch of handmade ornaments on it. And normally I get my items at like Hobby Lobby or something. This kit is called the Christmas ornament kit. It's just, I mean, the names are riveting, riveting. Um, <laughs> creative <laughs> but it's item 164378 164378 um but normally I get my my ornaments at the um at like Hobby Lobby but I'm not going to this year because I think these are really unique um so it comes with all the paper pieces it has of course dimensionals some of the paper has like a gold plaid. It's kind of hard to see, but it's double-sided printed gold plaid. So I think that's a little different because they're double-sided because if the ornament turns, right, you're going to see both sides of it. So it was really smart of them. The leaves are double-sided printed. So I really like that they were smart about this and they didn't chintz out and they double printed everything. Um, and so all of the greenery and everything is double-sided, which if you ever made an ornament and then realized the back of it was naked. Um, so 
Um, these, they also have gold twine. Um, and last year, if you came to retreat, Jill actually taught us how to make these, um, but they show you how to make it. You put a glue dot on the top and the bottom. And then when you put the twine through, the twine kind of anchors itself on the glue dots and they show you how to do it in the video and on the paper instructions. Um, but then you do one paper on this side and one on this, and then you kind of build all the pretty things on here and you need to glue them um, for like the little pine cones. And there's little gold berries too, actually. So um, so they're actually really, really cute. They don't say anything on them. You could definitely, if you wanted to add a label piece or something that had a sentiment on it, I think it would be a nice touch. I think they're a little plain without a sentiment on it. I think if it said something, I think I would be really excited. Um, oh, you bought a bunch of the retired ones. Yeah. I mean, I think you could do a similar project with those. Um, and I think they would be super cute. And this would teach you how, if you watch the video, it would just teach you how to do that. And then you just size the paper circle just a bit smaller than the ring itself. So um, yeah, but super cute kit. So I wanted to show both of those because those are the two new kits that came out. And we had seen you know, previews of them in the catalog and we were all kind of curious and wondering um, and so now you've seen them and you know what they make. And I think you can see, I think this one, Terry, did you look this one up too? I think this one was 18. Yeah. No, nah, no idea. All right. Let's see. Right. I'll find it. Um, go to shop products. We'll go. I got says 25. I think it's cheaper. Um, but maybe not, maybe 25. No, you're right. Yeah. 25. When you make one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two. Yes. Is that right? One, two, three. Yep. Yeah. So you make six of the big ones and three of the small ones. So you make nine ornaments for $25. So, um, and I price my ornaments like I price my cards. I make everything mix and match. Terry is on a roll. Um, I price them mix and match. Um, so if people want to do, they can buy a card or they can buy an ornament and I have them for exactly the same price only because I like simple pricing when, when I go to craft fairs because it gets too complicated otherwise. So, um, okay. All right. So those are the two new kits. We've talked about stamping with someone. We've talked about the paper pumpkin sale. Um, there will be new products. Um, there'll be an online exclusive release in November. That will come for demonstrators in October. So we will have access to pre-order if we want to. Um, I am going to predict that it's going to have some Valentines in it, um, because a lot of us have always complained that by the time we get the January catalog, it's too fast for Valentines. So I'm going to predict that there's a Valentine set in there. Um, Candy predicts that this online exclusive won't be as big. I don't think that's the case. I think they planned this online exclusive way before they released all the scrapbook stuff. And so I think we're going to be you know, a similar um, size as we were before um, in terms of the release. Um, and then we have World Card Making Day. So World Card Making Day is free for every single person. And every single person on this team needs to register for World Card Making Day because there is a free gift. And you would just be silly if you didn't take the free gift. You don't have to watch World Card Making Day on World Card Making Day. It is on Saturday, October the third going past the third i think i think it's like the fifth or the sixth let's say the fifth yes on october 5th and it's in that afternoon but if you're not available that's okay because they're going to tape it and you can watch it later and everybody who registers will get a free gift. They have not said what the gift is. I don't know if it will be like a coupon code or if um, one year we got like a free embellishment. I don't know. So I don't know what they're going to do for that. Um, they are focusing on the ephemera packs. 
Um, but I also know that they've given us like a preview of some new things whenever they do this. Like sometimes we see sneak peeks of things. Um, sometimes we learn a little bit more about how something's made. Um, so even if the ephemera packs aren't your thing, I would really encourage you and encourage all of your customers and friends. I would love to see every single person post World Card Making Day on their public social media with the link to register because every single person would, should take advantage of this. It's a super fun, free opportunity to do some crafting. You can host people over at your house if you want. Um, I'm going to have people at my place. I'm going to do an open studio. And I was asked kind of like, well, what are you going to do for that? And I said, well, I'm going to buy the ephemera packs that they're planning, but I'm just going to buy one of each. And I'll buy a couple packs of those cards and envelopes. I think they're overpriced, but it's okay. I'm just going to buy a couple and I'm going to have people come over. And then we might not all make the same thing. We might not make exactly what they're going to make on the screen, but everybody will get a chance to play with the ephemera pack if they haven't had a chance to yet. So um, you don't have to host people at your place. You can just watch it at, from the comfort of your house and you can encourage other people to register. Um, but I would highly recommend it. Um, if you don't register, um, my one concern is that they're going to shift away from World Card Making Day if we don't have enough people register or we don't have enough folks you know, to do this. So I really want to make sure that we're all registered and that we're encouraging our customers to register as well. Maybe okay. it'll work fine. Um, good. All right. Other questions, concerns, or comments? I am going to get out some door prizes and my notes so I can draw. Did you say when registration was? For World Card Making Day? Uh-huh. It has already opened. It is. Okay. Huh? So if you go to stampinup.com, like even the, the public side, you'll see there's a link for it there. I'll post it in our, um, it's weird. It's not under events, which I think is really weird, like on our tab, um, like if you're on the Stampin' Up side. Um, but if you go to the customer view, then um, you can actually um find it it's like tab here i'll actually i'm gonna post it i'm gonna copy it i'm gonna post it here in our group and then i'm gonna post it on our zoom and there we go and the registration will be open through the day before so they can register up until friday and then they're going to have to close registration because then they're going to send the link to everybody, you know, to to join the next day. So, um, Good. OK, I'm getting some fun door prizes out. <clears throat> I'm having some sort of embellishment disaster here where I've got way more embellishments than. Um, OK. So if you would like to share a project, then I would love to see it. And, hello, George, we can highlight you. Mm -hmm. So well, I'm going to share real quick. Okay. I pulled out all of my refill kits from my, my all-star paper pumpkin. Yeah. And uh, I found that um, after this lady bought all those cards, um, I sat down and I put together today three full sets of this. If you remember, it was the baseball cards. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't think you like these, Melissa. You're not a big baseball fan. Not a baseball um, fan. It's okay. But I, was, I picked up the slack where you did it. So, <laughs> so this is actually my, my fourth kit I put together. <clears throat> so I'm pretty excited love, about it. I love that. That's awesome. Uh, all right. Who else? I have one. <laughs> okay, Sarah, I'm going to spotlight you. We'll just keep okay, going. This is one of my cards <laughs> from my, oh my class this week. Love it. It's similar to what's been in Pinterest, but instead of 
they did something funky with the the uh, words in Pinterest where they took the dye and they outlined it and then they cut it out. And I just did two of the um, words and then just kind of offset them a little bit. So that's one of them. And that's why I needed this paper because I had this <laughs> card and another card that had that paper. And uh, anyway. <laughs> Love it. That's awesome. Uh, let's see who else had their hand up. Anita. All right. Spotlight. Uh, All right, ma'am. The friend that I borrowed her her dies. I did the seaside wishes, Ooh. and I did this. It was a lady I saw somebody. I cased her card, <laughs> but there's That's a little. I did two of them. It's a watercolor Ooh. technique. And mm -hmm. the paper is torn two different ways. So you can see how the edges of the paper, if you tear it one way, you get the white. And when mm -hmm. you tear it the other way, you don't get the white. But mm -hmm. but the technique, the watercolor technique of the background paper is really cool. I love it. I love you know, it. I, have, I haven't done anything with that set, but you just now inspired me. Um, oh, yeah. I, it's really cute. Yeah, you had me at pink. Yeah, so. that, that pink and that that like soft sea foam and the like that's a really pretty combo lovely you want me to show you? I, I can show you some others I was I don't know if you know I don't know if y'all ever do y'all ever buy a card kit from somebody else <laughs> yes <laughs> and but I didn't have you know I don't have the seaside wishes dies or the stamp so I thought well I saw this lady posting on one of my newsletters you know a card kit so I ordered her card kit but all she sent me was cardstock pieces. I thought she would cut out, at least I knew she wouldn't stamp, but I yeah. thought she'd cut out all the sun dollars and stuff, but she didn't. So that's mm. why I had to order my friends, <laughs> you know, set. <laughs> but I mean, I like the cards that, you know, like. Yeah, um, they're pretty designs, but yeah. But I thought the reason for the card kit was that if people don't have the set, that's how you can get some cards. Mm -hmm. But now I know better. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I guess we're 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 spoiled with the way Melissa, the way you and Candy do the the cards because you do at least cut out the the die cutting. Yeah, I try to do that, but there are definitely demonstrators who don't who expect you to buy the set, you know, yourself and um so yeah well i definitely don't see the purpose of that because i mean for people to order i mean what's the pur purpose you can have unless there are people that don't buy cardstock and stuff you yeah, know I let, I think some people need a lot of design help you know i mean you guys yeah. are pretty amazing but hey kathleen you've got a puppy there oh mm -hmm. let's spotlight i was like i spotlight for oh, oh my goodness <laughs> Yeah. I do. Well, Daddy's <laughs> yeah. for um for job. He's in Vegas, and so she's being extra needy. Sorry. Oh, no. Oh. She, she <laughs> deserves it. She deserves yeah. it. Yeah. Um, oh, she looks so healthy. She's all right. She's pretty all right. We love her. <laughs> Since we have me spotlighted, I'll show the cards that I made real quick. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I'm gonna go to Elena. Ooh, yeah. Well, I got this embossing uh -huh. folder out of the um, recommendation of one of my fellow Southern Sweet Stampers, Melissa Murphy. She said I would be ridiculous if I didn't have this stamping or this embossing folder, and I didn't. Um, and now I can't stop using it. I really like the texture and I like the way that it looks. Um, this is an old sentiment, but I did one that is a current sentiment that I posted on the Southern Sweet Stampers. Um, but this is that really pretty uh, Regal Floral DSP um, that came in the um, the a team meeting packet. I just couldn't bear doing cutting the way that it was. So I just used that side of it. Um, and then I cased uh, someone named Jan Clothier, Clothier um, and her uh, uh, design on that one. Um, <laughs> my first paper pumpkin in God knows how long. Um, I did it slightly different. Again, kind of has like a masculine look and I did the book bind um, oh, nice. So it's a little bit different. Really proud of myself for actually doing a paper pumpkin kit um, instead of just hoarding it because that's a personal problem. <laughs> uh, they're all retired, but someone recommended uh, tulips. Um, and so I made this card, which is that like two-step stamping 
which I think turned out really well. It's a little bit late or early, depending on how you think of it, because it would be great for the spring and I am on top of things. Um, and then the last one is this um, guy, again, also retired, but uh, one of my friends asked for a purple card and I thought that that was pretty purple. And I'm on the inside, it just says, um, your kindness is so appreciated with a strip of the DSP. So nice. those That's are the gorgeous. ones. Gorgeous. And puppy approved. And puppy approved. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, so sweet. All right, let's see. Elena, what you got? Um, I've been doing more squares for our team project. Oh, uh -huh. man, the lighting is so bad. I don't know. I might have to go in a different room. Well, there we go. Anyway, so mm -hmm. just, doing, just doing squares, and then I got carried away and did more. That's Hard nice. candy. <clears throat> I call that card candy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> Pop it on a card. Those are cute. Yeah. And my favorite. Oh, yeah. So cute. Thanks. Sorry about the lighting. No, that second one is from the new um, stamp set that goes with the scrapbooking yeah. kit, right? Yeah, I like it. Yeah. 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 That's a really good one. So I'm excited about that. Awesome. Now I that like... I saw that, can I say something? I'm sorry, I'm interrupting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, all somebody else has got their hand up. I quit. No, mm -hmm. go, go, Terry. It's okay. okay. I am so grateful. <clears throat> Excuse me. I got the COVID two days after my son walked in at the Southern Sweet Stamper. So I'm getting over it right now. I can't believe it happened. But anyway, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, I am so grateful. I read your newsletter to us today and you, you put in there my favorites. I'm in love hey, with those little hey, four right. inch coffee Wait for me, okay? Okay. Those four inch coffee cups. I mean, that was uh that was a godsend today because I I couldn't find them to save my soul. So thank you. I'm yeah. gonna be ordering those. Absolutely. And I'm gonna use that that stamp set. I bought it spe specifically to make the short coffee cups. Yeah. I think it's a great one for that. I can't wait to play around with that too. So yeah, it's a lot of cups. Yeah, that's okay. You don't have to go through them all this year. You could do half this year. <laughs> well, thank you for permission. You're welcome. <laughs> share them with a friend. That's what we oh, do. Well, Patsy, um, it's good to hear you laugh. Thank you for that. <laughs> um, good. Who else? Linda, I saw you popped one in the chat. I love it. She's got some cards in the chat. Um, I am not doing a fall sampler. Um, Patsy is doing a sampler on her smaller team, which is really sweet. Um, I'm going to do a Christmas sampler. Um, I did not think about doing a fall sampler. We could, if you guys really wanted to, um, we could do a fall sampler next month and we could do a Christmas one and the one after. Um, but I'm definitely doing a Christmas one in November. So they'll be due to me. Um, usually I try to make them do like the 10th of the month so I can like turn them back around and get them out to everybody before the holidays. Um, so if you want to go ahead and if you want to go ahead and mark your calendars to have me nine squares by November 10th, I will put up the sign up sheet for it like this week. Um, and we'll just get on that. Um, so, um, but yeah, no problem, Kathleen. Um, yeah, Patsy's team is doing a cute little fall sampler. I hope when you, Patsy, when y'all get it together, take a nice photo and I want to see it. So yeah. I'm sure we all would. So, yeah. okay. um, Ooh, what you got there? You working on paper pumpkin? I did before I got sick. <laughs> I said, yay. Hey. But it's been since the last meeting. Yeah. These are really pretty and the envelopes are so pretty. I mean, we know why it's sold out and we know why I'm still getting people messaging me, asking me if I have an extra. So <laughs> yeah, that one's really pretty. Yeah. 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 That one's pretty. I finally sat down and did that. So that was good. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Anybody else have a card or something they'd like to share? Oh, Miss Pat. All right. Let me spotlight you. Um you know that background is going to make it impossible to see a card. I know, and I can't figure out how to undo it. And I, <laughs> and my, it right, right in front of you. Right in my, front of you. Oh, no, we can't see. 
make your body bigger and kind of like sit up a little bit. My uh, my regular computer. Oh. Oops. Flashed. I saw it. It was pretty. It was the daisy paper. Well, I'm sorry. You know what, Pat? I think it's kind of magical that you can make your whole self disappear while you do this. It's like kind of spooky. Yeah, that's pretty <laughs> interesting. <laughs> well, you know what, Miss Pat? Why don't you take a picture and post it on our group, and we would love to see it. Okay. Well, there's two, there's two of them, and oh. um, I, I just used the reverse of of one out for the other one. So to, it's kind of interesting. Cool. So thank oh, you. You know, just sit up taller. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sit up taller. And hold it against your breastplate. Yeah, like right here. There you Perfect. go. Perfect. Don't, don't, yeah, yeah, don't move it away. Closer to your body. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Be oh, one. That is a nice design. It so nice. the piece comes out of this. Oh, yeah. Very nice. I like it. That's pretty. So one, one opens this way and the other one opens the other way nice it was kind of fun i like it <laughs> well you know that paper is so bold that and it's beautiful but i had to put something to tone it down so yeah. thank you yes <laughs> when you yeah sometimes the patterns are a lot and you need to cut them up so <laughs> tone them down yes all right anybody else have something they'd like to share all right i'm gonna draw for some door prizes all right so tonight's door prizes come to you from the land of embellishment land oh, all right Somehow I keep producing rainbow backed adhesive dots. I do not know how y'all these have become the, um, these have become the copper twine of 2024. Uh -huh. so, um, I also have a pack of the regal foiled adhesive back dots. These are the new ones from the holiday catalog. Those are really pretty. I have a pack of the iridescent foil gems. These are the ones from the annual catalog. These are the ones that are kind of gold. Those are pretty. I also have a pack of the Druzy adhesive backed. These are the ones that are quite sparkly. I have a pack of the adhesive backed shiny sequins for more of a tropical flair. I might get your spring going. That actually coordinates with like the Zinnia stuff. And then a pack of the iridescent adhesive backed discs. And these are actually great. They have like a cherry cobbler and a pool party and a white. So these are actually really fun for, and then the kind of pinkish look. Um, these are great for holiday cards as well. So, all right. I will now, I have everybody's name that's here. And then you get an extra if you shared a project, which I think almost everybody did. And Lisa and Deidre, I see you guys. So I got your names in the mix as well. And <clears throat> I'm doing good. I haven't coughed. Feeling better, you know, this. Oh, being sick is for the birds. All right. <clears throat> um, all right. So here we go. And then I don't know what the packets are next month, but um, Candy and I will talk about them and figure out who's going to do what. Um, all right, here we go. My very scientific method, lots of little tiny pieces of paper with your names on it. All right, so person number one, Glinda, Miss Glinda, what would you like? Let's see, I've got one, two, three, four. All right. Hmm. Druzy, she says. Druzy yes. it is, my dear. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to take these to the package. The other day, one got lost and I had to go back and literally had to watch the tape again to see who won. All right, next person. We have Miss Sarah. What would you like? Ooh. 
Um, oh. The uh, it was the second one that you showed the. Um, oh, the regal. Yeah. Regal foiled adhesive back. Yes. Yeah. Yes. We got it. All right, and then Anita. The first one you've got there. Uh, the little gold foil. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Those are pretty. All right, and another person. Terry. Hmm. Somebody took my druzy. Uh. Um, <laughs> Um, I'm going to take the, uh, the shiny, just the flattest one what, for these, mailing purposes. These are the flattest, actually. The iridescent adhesive back discs. Yeah, they're I'll actually really fun. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the Druzy are the least flat, by the way, if you're curious. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, that's, that went out the door. Yeah, those are definitely <laughs> if I would have gotten those, I wouldn't have been so considerate. Yeah. Um, Lisa, you won. So would you like the adhesive back shiny sequins or the rainbow adhesive back dots? Which Lisa? The only Lisa we have here tonight. Oh, um, sorry I got on late. That's I was okay. out of town. Um, the sequins, please. Absolutely. I'll take what's behind door number two. I love it. I love it. Um, perfect. And then one more. Oh, let's see. I like to not look. Marion's not here. She said, Miss Pat, would you like the rainbow adhesive back dots? Uh, you can go ahead and give those to someone else. I won those last time. Oh, well then you're full up on these. All right. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> let's find somebody else this might be like my copper twine where i have to end up you know just like making someone take them i think it's all the sarah <laughs> sarah uh actually hello, sarah would you like some rainbow uh, yeah yeah <laughs> i'm pretty sure that i forced many 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 bolts of copper twine on sarah at one point yes um, when i bought too much of it so um, sometimes you forget what you buy, you know, uh, and then you buy more. I'm sure that's never happened to any of you. Yes. So, um, well, y'all, um, super happy to be into the holiday catalog with you. Um, we have, um, I've got my retreat coming up next month. Um, and I'm also doing retreat in a box. Um, if you're interested, that went out in the customer newsletter today, um, if you have, um, incentive coupons and speaking of, we need to celebrate, um, if you have incentive coupons, um, if you have carryover incentive coupons, I am going to threaten to take away your carryover incentive coupons. <laughs> so you need to use your coupons. Um, it's important because then I don't have a lot of um, a liability kind of waiting on me, right? And I kind of know, you know, what I've got to spend. Um, but I did want to celebrate Lisa Langer. So I'm glad you came on late. I'm glad that I did it at the end of the meeting. Um, but congratulations. She had over 500 and over 900. So yay, Lisa. Clapper, clapper. Yay. Um, so way to have a great month in the month of August. I think hopefully many of us are having a great month this month because the holiday catalog is always lovely. Um, but looking forward to um, some more holiday crafting with you guys. Can't wait to do that. Um, we will be doing um, Secret Santa at Christmas um, and I will put out the, um, I'll put out the Christmas sampler sign up list. We try to do just one design per stamp set. Um, but I will say that we can do online exclusive. Like, I don't really care as long as it's a current Christmas stamp set, you can use any current Christmas stamp set. So it could be online. It could be a carryover from last year. Um, any one of the number of the ones we have, I prefer to only have one per stamp set though. Um, so I will make it fair and I will tell everybody that I will post the sign up on Wednesday morning so that everybody 
and maybe I'll wait until Wednesday. I'll wait till Wednesday night. How does that sound? Because then everybody will be online. So Wednesday night, I'll post the sign up at seven o'clock for that so that everybody can be ready for that. Um, and then um, for those of you that know, my retreat sold out, my fall retreat sold out really, really quickly. Um, I am going to open up registration for my 2025 retreats. And I will put out a newsletter situation for that, but I'm going to open them all up at the same time um, because I've got the dates confirmed and locked in. So um, did you really, Glenda? Okay, I'm going to go back in and re-pull reports then because clearly that's bizarre. Okay, I will go in and re-pull reports and I'll make sure and I'll put a graphic up. I'm sorry, Glenda. Maybe I stopped midway through a task. Who knows? Um Maybe, maybe COVID happened. I don't know. I'll have to see. I thought I did that before I had COVID, but you never know. Um, so I will open up registration for my 2025 retreats. If you're interested in coming, I'm going to have one at the end of April, one in July and one in October. Um, so I do those in Temple, Texas. And the other thing I posted on our team page, I'm about to roll over to Southern Sweet Stampers is uh, uh, the on stage in March of 2025. So um, I have not reserved this house. I have posted pictures of it because I don't want to put out, I don't want to reserve a house if I know I can't fill it. So I'm very nervous about that. It's in Raleigh, North Carolina. I'm super excited for on stage. I think it's going to be really great. Um, and But I want to make sure that I have you know, deposits and confirmation from people so that we can fill the house. So I've had a few people say that they want to come. That's great. I'm going to pull it over to Southern Sweet Stampers and offer it to the wider group. So I'll give you guys probably until Wednesday as well. And then I'm going to pull it over there and just make sure. Um, of course, you can stay at the local hotel that they're going to have. I'm sure they'll have a room block at the hotels. Um, the place that I've that I would like to reserve is about a mile away. Um, so I'm hoping that you know, we can walk and we really enjoyed walking. I think in Salt Lake City, we were about a mile away and it was a nice walk. It was good for us to kind of exercise our legs after sitting all day. Um, I prefer to do the house instead of the hotel because I like to have a place to sit <laughs> and relax and unwind and talk. Um, and uh, we're fortunate Sarah's actually going to be there a little early. So we'll have a way to get groceries so we'll still be able to cook some meals at the house and stuff too, which is awesome. Um, so, um, you know, just know that that's my preferred way to travel when we do Stampin' Up! events. Um, it doesn't have to be yours, um, but you're definitely welcome to hang out and stay with us at the house. And um, it's a three-story with a rooftop, like, bar situation where we can overlook Raleigh. It looks really, really amazing. Um, and I'm impressed that it hasn't been reserved yet. I had a few other places I had in mind and they weren't reserved. So um, fingers crossed that it's going to still be there once we kind of firm up who would like to come with us to on stage in Raleigh in March of 2025. So um, registration for Raleigh will open in November. So, um, and I do know I do think it will fill this year um, because these close to my heart makers are chomping at the bit for an event. <laughs> so I have a feeling that Raleigh is going to fill. Um, and um, I think that they are very, very excited to, to be in person with Stampin' Up. So, um, but I appreciate each and every one of you. I'm going to stop the recording and if I can figure out how to do that, because everything has moved now. Okay, great. We're going to stop.